this already. I'm going to put one more pin in this, and then I'm going to tell you what we're doing. Or Jen can tell you what we're doing. Do you want we to know what we're doing? We are going to make some trivets or hot pads or whatever you want them so to be. So we're considering these a trivet because we're going to make them thicker. Really thick. Than a hot pad. Right. And if you don't know what a trivet is, you can talk to my nine-year-old, and that's because I tell them to put trivets on the table every night, so they finally figured out what they are. He's eight. That's true. I was actually referencing my daughter who's 10, but I can't keep track of their ages. Right. Anyway, so it's something to put, you know, hot dishes on, you know. On the table. I pulled the casserole out of the oven, got to put it on something. I have cast iron ones at home. But these are how it works. I've seen silicone ones too. But, you know, these are going to be fun because we're thinking about this as incorporating it into your holiday decor. You know, as you set up, if you're fancy, say... And you set up your table things for Thanksgiving. It's nice to have those already placed instead of, you know, you, you have, have your nice pretty table setting and then you throw a ratty old hot pad on it to set the turkey on or something. Yeah. So we're going to make trivets. Hot okay. pads are going to be made the same way, just a little thinner. Well, gonna, I'll tell you the difference here in one minute. Sorry, I was going to find our little video so I could... You know, respond Do this. if you have questions. I am going to start quilting through this mass. Through, through that pile. And then I'm going to tell you what she's doing. Right. Sorry. Wi-Fi being slow. Yay. Okay. Got, got us. All right. So, to make this, we need a few different materials. And we're going to actually finish these next week because we're going to show you another trick. But, the things we need are two squares of fabric. No, I turn my phone on, do not disturb, and then it's still there. So I've got two different colors. You guys, the fabrics we chose for this are from Janet Nesbitt's, right? Right. Blessings of, of Home Mama. collection. This is a very Thanksgiving-y collection. It's what this uh, Blessings of Home quilt is made out of. Right. Very fall, very Thanksgiving, so perfect for this. I've got two different colors. They could be the same color. It really doesn't matter. These are approximately 10 to 11 inches square-ish. Right. We're going to trim them down. Mm -hmm. And you want them a little bit bigger than what you're going to trim them. But two pieces of fabric. And then, this is my other mass over here. I have two pieces of batting. You want batting? The cotton batting. The same size. Cotton batting. This cannot be polyester. It can't be 80-20. It needs to be cotton. And that's because of heat. And if you've ever made the, like, the soup bowl cozies or anything, you understand why it's got to be cotton. You put poly or something in a microwave, it's going to melt and get weird. We're and dealing with heat hot. and hot. So we want straight cotton, right? right? So two squares of cotton batting. And then if I was making a hot pad, I would use one square of the Insel Bright. But I'm making a trivet, so I'm going to use two, which is why this stuff now, is so your machine fat. may not like it being that thick. Okay. In, which case, in, in which case, drop feel free to make a one. layer of Insel Bright. So, Insel Bright, if you're unfamiliar, has like this metallic -y woven stuff. Anyway, it's an insulator. Insel, it's a layer of insulation. But it also so, keeps the radiant heat from spreading. Exactly. So, it's going to keep the heat up high and not going down onto your table or coming out to your hand. Right. So, that's why we need the Insel Bright. The reason we want the cotton batting, you guys, is because it's going to absorb any moisture. Okay? Right. So you don't want to use just the insole bright. You want the cotton so that it can absorb the moisture that comes with steam and heat. Right. And, you know, the air. They work Unless you live here and there's no moisture in the air. Um, all of the above. So this is my fun little... Broke my thread again. Batting sandwich right here. My thread would break less if I had a bigger needle. I know. But I don't. You should. So that's okay. Okay. So my batting sandwich is I've got a layer of cotton. My insole bright. I'm doing a double layer. You can use this one if you'd like. And another layer of cotton batting. This is really fancy, you guys. Really, really, really fancy. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to put one of our colored squares on top. Flip it over, put another colored square. Another beauty of using these darker fabrics, you guys, is they can get dirty. We they were can specific about get those choices. Singed. They can all of those kind of things can happen and they can still look beautiful. If I'm using um white or a beautiful cream, 
that's uh, asking for trouble for this type of a it, it means a lot more washing and potentially a shorter lifespan as far as keeping it looking pretty so that's why we chose these prints they can get a little dirty they can get a little singed potentially if you're in my house that can happen i like to think i'm a good cook but you know life happens and um so that this is our sandwich Jen and I are just doing some straight line quilting on this. We're just gonna stick them together. The idea is that they just get stuck together with straight lines across. She's using a really nice big stitch, a long stitch. Right. And I'm gonna show you a close up when she finishes this in a few minutes. And um, because this isn't a whole bunch of piecing. This isn't something that really needs a ton of help being put together. Now you can make them really decorative with quilted blocks. Oh yeah, like if you've got gorgeous. a fancy embroidery machine, like also um, or whatever. This would be a great project for those orphan blocks. Yes, orphan blocks could turn into great trivets or pot holders, whatever the case is. So you can do a lot more with this. We're keeping it really simple here. Yep. Just to be clear. Right. But. We're going to show you something else fun next week. Um, if you've ever bought Insel Bright, you'll see it comes with this little template and instructions on how to make an oven mitt. I don't know about you, but my hand barely fits in that. So with stitching, it wouldn't really work for me. So draw bigger. So you, But you can take this template and just, you know, add half an inch or an inch all the way around. And then you've got a nice big oven mitt. Guys, these are great gifts. They're easy gifts, they're useful gifts, and they can still be handmade. So it's a lot of fun. Oh, broke my thread. She's, okay. every, every row I'm breaking it. Really the trick here is I need a bigger needle. I need a bigger eye in my needle. And the reason for that is she's using a 12 weight thread. So we're not just doing big long stitches, we're doing big chunky thread. Big chunky thread Why stitches. This thread? So it would show up. And material. Oh, and okay. Let's talk thread when we're doing this. So you know we're not, I mean, we are thread snobs, but we're not super thread snobs as in like 100% cotton all the time no matter what, right? Well, when I quilt, I usually do use a polyester thread partly because it doesn't break. Yeah, poly is really strong. But once again, we're adding heat. We're going to add really hot heat. I'm going to take something straight out of a broiler and put it on here, which means at 400 and something degrees or whatever, uh, Polly's gonna melt. So right. we have to use cotton thread. Right. And so if you ever make the microwave bowl cozies, if you're making like the bowl that. cozies or anything like that, you need 100% cotton thread. Mm -hmm. it's just like the 100% cotton batting, we need to use quality materials on that so that it can handle the heat that um, man-made fibers don't necessarily mm -hmm. like. And I mean, and we were going through our orophil yesterday in the shop, and we just didn't have the right color. Well, we had some colors that I thought would work, but then we thought, hey, if we're going to do big stitches, let's, let's, let's do like, some... So, but it, it does complicate things to use the 12-weight thread on the machine, especially since we didn't put in a bigger needle. Right, because I like small needles. I should have changed. Yeah. I should have brought one of my 9014s. Jen and I, 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 I love my 7010s. That's what I use, too. And, um... But, but I think part of it is because I do a lot of digital, I do a lot of batiks, and so um, I really want that tiny needle hole. But for something like this, I really want that the bigger needle hole. Why did I hit this? This pedal goes too fast. I'm blaming anyway. everything else. Anyway, she's gonna struggle. Just for the sake of time, let's just show them you what you're doing. You can see that there's some stitches that aren't coming through because I went too fast. One of the things with time, so timing, if you're missing stitches, it's probably timing. If, you're, if your machine is skipping stitches. Um, what's, and what's happening is because I'm going too fast for something so thick. So timing, for those of you who don't know what that is, because it's just a new word. Oh, mom brought you bigger needles. Ah, Look at her. Yay. Oh, that's a 100. That should do Sweet. fine. Sweet. Okay, the timing on your machine, you guys, the way a stitch is formed is because... That bobbin, that shuttle underneath, and that needle come down at just the right time where they meet to put the thread through to create the stitch. Do the little loop. Okay, here. so if your machine is skipping stitches or we're having um, 
or it's like hitting the bobbin case or something like that, that means your timing is off. And so sometimes when you're doing big stuff, if you're going too fast, it doesn't have time, it doesn't to, have time to get completely through to make the connection. And so you're skipping stitches. So those of you who have made a lot of bags, gone through thick bosal layers or anything like that, you might have seen skip stitches. Or if you're just trying to uh, quilt on your domestic machine and you're going through the quilt sandwich, the skip stitches are all about the timing and that's because it didn't get a chance to complete the stitch. It right. doesn't necessarily mean you need to take your machine in to be fixed. Right. For, in this case, slow down. What it means, for, yeah. And usually, if you're quilting on your machine at home or anything like that, it usually just means slow the heck down, take it easy, it's and you'll get through. But Jen and I are both speed quilters. Right. And so slowing down is not in my nature. And so I do end up with some skip stitches. But that is why that happens. So if that's happening on your machine at home, chances are the only thing you really need to do is slow down. Or in this case, working with a thicker or thread, in this a, case, a bigger needle is good. Now, bi a bigger needle, contrary to what some people think, is not longer. If it's longer, that's going to mess up with the timing. A bigger needle is thicker um, and has, and a, has bigger a bigger eye. eye. So, so, like, this is a denim needle that we just put in. Denim needles are nice and thick. They're also sharper than... Um, some of your universals and that's because it's it helps to complete the stitch if it can poke its way through easier right if so like a jersey needle that has the ball head it doesn't need ex the, it, the reason it's got a rounded head is because it doesn't need the extra help to get through to get the through the fabric plus you don't want to rip the knit and you don't want to rip the knit exactly but jeans you need that extra help, right, to get down into your fabric. And so we have a sharper needle. Um, when working with batiks, I like to use sharps instead of a universal right. for the same reason, because I've got to poke through that weave, and so I want a sharper needle. And so sharps aren't necessarily bigger. If you see a needle that's quote unquote a sharp instead of a universal, it's not bigger, it's just got a sharper point. Because on a universal, the goal is that we're going in between the fabric we're just going in between the weave, we're not cutting the weave. Right. And a sharp is more likely to cut the weave, but when the weave is super tight, that ah, becomes see? best row yet. More interesting. Okay. Sorry if the video is cutting out, you guys. I don't know why. Um this Facebook is awesome. We will have a complete one uploaded later for sure. Um this pedal. It's because you're using the electric pedal that's made to go fast. Right. But it's going much better. See how it's not breaking? I knocked wood. Knock, knocking on wood because I just knock accidentally it said that out loud. Um, knock it now. Okay. So I did put a couple big safety pins in there when Jen was quilting. Uh, because those layers are so thick, I didn't actually close the safety pins. And the reason for that is because... I want to hold the layers together, but I don't want to distort anything. Um, I like to use the spray base. Yes. The problem with this one is like four layers, so it would be a lot of... Right. I baste each layer individually. So the goal was just to kind of slightly hold it together while she's going through. Now right. another thing you're going to notice when doing straight line quilting like this, I apologize, my water bottle's in the way. Um, she's moving all the way from one side to the other. You're not bouncing around, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a walking foot, so I know some people are going to jump on here, and you're going to yell at me because I'm not going back over here and starting again. You know what? It's fine because, because I'm using a walking foot. We're using the walking foot, and it can gradually help those layers move together. Right. I'm not, I'm not getting big waves doing no. this. And that's because of the walking foot element. And if, you, if you're not using a walking foot, then yes, you need to come back around, clip your thread, start over, and come back. Right. Okay, so to do straight line quilting, I just took my ruler, used my Frixon pen, drew one inch lines, lines one inch apart all the way down, and that's what she's following. Um, feel free to use the Frixon pen, because, well, you know, they're heat erasable, and this is going to get heat over and over and over again for its entire life. So they're totally fine. Thanks for the new needle, Mom. Yeah, that right? helped a lot. <laughs> it's one of those things, like, when we get into sewing and quilting and all those things, we don't think about 
that like, stuff a lot sometimes because it's like we take for granted right the needle and what it does and well or I'll have people in class that say well when do I need to change my needle and I'm sitting here listening to their needle hit their fabric and I'm like, like about a year ago yeah um because even the really nice chrome plated fancy Schmetz needles are a dollar ten a piece yes they, they're not terribly expensive. They're the, one of the least expensive things we use in quilting, and they will make a big difference in your project. That being said, I'm not the person who says, oh, new project, new needle. But if I can hear my needle hit my fabric, and listen to some boutiques, which is yes, a different story. Yes, in which story, case it's different. Um, it's a new needle. And also, if you're starting, starting to see thread pulls, thread pulls are a big Hinge. Like if it's if I'm stitching and I'm seeing the like fabric get almost like a run in it, right? Like your nylons when you I don't wear nylons though. Back in the day when I had to wear nylons, if it starts to get like that little run in it, that means you really need a needle, right? Because okay. it probably has what's called a burr. Because amazingly enough, the uh, see not a needle break from here over. That's thread not break. a thread break. That's what I meant. Okay. I'm going to show you what we're wow, going to do. Wow, that gold is really pretty over here. See? So we have our nice, thick, puffy, gold, big stitch quilting. Guys, this, I know it looks crazy thick, but it's not as ridiculous as it sounds. This is going to be fun. Okay. You know what's going to be more fun? Adding more layers to bind it. <laughs> right? All good. Okay, so we have our fun little square. Pivot. Guys, this is our binding. And we haven't cut it yet, and we're going to do it next week, and Jen can tell you why. Because we're going to do a bias binding. And that's because I'm going to take... Okay, by the way, this was like a 10 by 11 inch square when it started. This is a 9 inch circle. That's what we call draw in. It shrinks. Okay, that's why I said make it bigger. Right. Um, so we're going to make circular trivets. And so in order to do that, we are going to have to have a bias binding because... We need it to ease around that circle so that we don't have pleats. Okay, let's see if I can do this. And we, we're using the circular acrylic um, template because, oh my gosh, it's just easy in drawing and cutting. And if you've got it, I mean, use it. If you I have these same ones at home and I, I didn't bring them with me, but thankfully mom has a better stocked sewing room than I do. So, so Mom's sewing room is like the shop, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of the backup shop. I know, it's like, what do we need for the studio? Uh, not much, it's all at mom's house. Right? Mom's got everything in her sewing room. We just don't steal her seam ripper. No, because it's dull. Or uh, rotary cutter. We, we've got our own. Um, <laughs> see, okay, that took a second to get through all those layers. Do we see this? But this is going to be so pretty. I know. With this gold binding. It's going to be great. So, join us next week. I can't talk anymore. Next week, we're going to take... So, to do, I got stuff to do four of these. Out of ten inches by a width of fabric, you can make four. But for the binding, you guys, I did half a yard. And that's because we're going to cut it on the bias to make bias binding. If you don't know what that is, check in next week. It's not as bad as people It used it to be the me. rule with quilting. Then we discovered it's only a rule if you're doing curves, which right. is awesome because it's kind of a pain. But for curves, it's a lifesaver. It's required. And we'll show you why next week. Right? Right? Yeah. So, have a great week. Have a good and week. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.